Reading a checkbox programmatically. Handling checkboxes in tabular form submissions often causes confusion as it's submitted as a dense array compared with other field types wielding an array the same size as the number of rows displayed. It's like comparing apples to oranges. This diagram shows the difference. A field that's hidden or is normal text will have one entry per record. So the previous example had list price, which showed a number of rows on the screen. And regardless of whether those text items had any values or not, we had an entry in the array. Checkboxes normally contain an ID or a row number, and there'll be one element in the array for each checkbox checked, not for every row, so there'll be no gaps. So for three rows displayed on the screen where two are checked, we'll actually have two values in the final dense array to process. And we need to consider that when we run our PLSQL. So this video will take us through a demonstration of a simple algorithm that will make thinking and processing easier. It basically turns the dense checkbox array into a sparse array that matches the other fields arrays. So first, we'll go and modify our new products report and add a checkbox item. So there's our item checkbox number 43, and it's just going to be a row number value inside the checkbox. None of them are checked. Apply those changes and run the page. And here we're only displaying the HTML, so we need to go back and edit our column definition, the checkbox to make it a standard report column. And now we can modify our process. So instead of it just handling the list price, we're going to cater for whether the checkboxes have been checked. So the process is a little bit bigger. Here's the align checkboxes procedure, which turns a dense array into a sparse array. So we align the checkboxes up with the remainder of the arrays, and then we'll process it as normal. And this time we get to say, well, if the checkbox is checked, we'll update the list price. So we'll apply those changes, and we have an issue. Once again, I've forgotten a semicolon. So finally, we can run the page to see that it only updates those values that are checked. So if I turn this to 81 and 99, but I only check number 81. After I save it, this one's saved, one product has been updated, and this one has not. So checkboxes are a bit of a pain in Apex, but we can see that we can get around it, and there's only the HTML infrastructure that's to blame. The next up, we'll have a look at a nifty API that will allow us to publish Apex help metadata.